Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto all hearts be open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star didst manifest thine only begotten Son to the Gentiles, mercifully grant that we, who know thee now by faith, may be led onward through this earthly life until we see the vision of thy heavenly glory through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. The lesson as it is written in the 60th chapter of the book of Isaiah beginning at the first verse. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee, 
The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, and all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee, and the rams of Nabaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance upon mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the eyes shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them. Unto the name of the Lord thy God, and unto the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Here ends the lesson. The epistle is written in the third chapter of the letter of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. For this reason I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, that through the Church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose which he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confidence of access through our faith in him. Here endeth the epistle. The Lord be with you. And with thy the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be Glory to you. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Christ was to be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written in by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, 
when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. When they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. In our current situation, we hear much talk of the light at the end of the tunnel. What will be its source, and when will it arrive? A recent issue of the Devoir featured an editorial cartoon on this subject. The composition was simple and stark featuring two white word balloons on a pure black background. An invisible person asked, which way to the light at the end of the tunnel? And their unseen companion responded, over there. The subtlety and darkness of the message caught me off guard. It took me a while to get the point. We are groping about in total obscurity. Although we may feel this way sometimes, God sends us messengers bearing better news. This evening, we hear the prophet known as Third Isaiah proclaim, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. With this verse and the two which follow it, begins the canticle known as Surge Illuminare in our prayer book. I say it at Matins throughout Advent, on the darkest days of the year, to inspire me to carry on and meet the challenges of the day. Our readings for Epiphany share similar themes and narratives. In gross darkness, a light appears. People are drawn to it and lift up their eyes to see its brightness, which reveals and makes known and shows forth wisdom. 
so one can discern the difference between earthly and heavenly glory. In response, people of many nations, both Jewish and Gentile, have their hearts enlarged. They rise up and rejoice with great joy, presenting precious gifts of gold and incense, offering worship and service to God. Isaiah expresses this message as he proclaims the anticipated restoration of Zion, which will bring about the return of the glory of the Lord along with the return of dispersed Judeans, assisted by Gentiles. People from foreign lands will bring gifts to honor the Lord. A new light will shine on Jerusalem. They will turn toward it and recognize the only true source of light, God himself, who will come to his people as they will come to him. Centuries later, the author of the Gospel of Matthew will make extensive use of Isaiah and his fellow prophets to demonstrate how their prediction of the coming of the Messiah is fulfilled by the birth, life, and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. In his narrative, the chief priests and scribes quote the prophet Micah's words about the birthplace of the Christ. The travelers here are Persian astronomers, the Magi, who are the first to recognize the king of the Jews. Yet despite the brilliant light of the star which leads them to the Holy Family, dark undertones remain. The coming of the light challenge the, challenges the existing order of earthly powers. Herod, a client king, was notorious for reacting savagely to potential rivals. When his attempt to use the Magi as spies to provide him with information about his rival king was unsuccessful, he ordered the atrocious slaughter of the infant Jesus cohorts, the holy innocents. Like the wise men, we too are on a journey into uncharted territory following the light in the darkness, and offering our particular gifts. Consider that within eight days of our last pre-pandemic Mass, we held our first gathering on Zoom and began our virtual celebrations of morning prayer the following Sunday. We resilient St. John's people reopened our church on the earliest day possible, September 6th and on Michaelmas celebrated our first post-confinement Mass, which was also the first ordination in the history of our parish. We are un indeed on the cutting edge of tradition and a resource to the wider Church. When we adopted this motto, we had no idea that the many and varied gifts we offer to support worship would now involve tasks for which most of us have little or no training. As we continue to adapt to unfamiliar technology and constantly shifting circumstances, we arise and shine, lighting the way to keep our community together and broadcasting the acting out of our faith on the internet to keep people, to people seeking meaning and hope in these strange times. Thanks be to God for giving us this opportunity to open our treasures and bring our offerings to his redeeming work through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost.
I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening for this Feast of the Epiphany and those who are watching us online. Uh, as I think everyone knows, uh, the Premier has made an announcement about uh, uh, various things this evening and uh, in-person worship uh, will not be continuing for the next few weeks, I think, but uh, we will be uh, telling you more about our plans tomorrow when we have read through things and have heard things from the diocese. So we'll, we will be continuing on with worship one way or another, as Mother Wendy said, we're a very resilient lot, and uh, wish you all a very happy Epiphany Tide and remain safe.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, to our benefit and to that of all his holy church. We offer the holy sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving of the Holy Mass to the honor and glory of Almighty God, whose manifestation and outreach to the whole world in his incarnate Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we celebrate upon this day. We pray first for this broken world entrusted to our care, especially for countries and areas where there is war, civil strife, and unrest, for those who suffer injustice and those who work for justice and peace, especially the United Nations and its agencies, for all the peoples of the world contending with political extremism, violence, and polarization, as we pray especially for the United States, for Syria, for Israel and Palestine and the just sharing of the Holy Land between them. We pray for our earth and its living systems, and for those suffering from natural and human-caused disasters. We pray for people suffering from the COVID pandemic, for their families and friends, for our collective health and resilience during this time of renewed confinement, for our elected representatives to make wise and enlightened decisions at this time, for doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and medical researchers. We pray for the Church Sacrament of God's love, light, and peace in this world, especially for our Christian sisters and brothers who cannot gather to celebrate the birth of Christ, either because of COVID or of persecution. We pray in the Church for our Anglican Communion, for the bishop, people, clergy of the Diocese of Abuja in the Church of Nigeria. In our own diocese, we pray for the people and clergy of the Archdeaconry of Bedford and the Richelieu, and their Archdeacon, Tim Smart, and the people and clergy of the Archdeaconry of St. Andrews and their Archdeacon, Victor David Mbuyi Bipungu. We pray for the people and clergy of our companion Diocese of Messesi in the Church of Tanzania and their Bishop James Almasi, for the people and clergy of the Territory of the People in Central British Columbia and their Bishop Lincoln McKeon, and for the people of our companion Parish of St. Michael and All Angels in Winnipeg and their Rector Father Kevin Franklin. We pray for those who have commended themselves to our prayers. Sandra Guillaume, Glenn Cartwright, Father Arthur Classen, Canoness Letty James, Melanie Carmichael, Alain, Lina and Vince Canarsel, Tony Whitehead, Ala Bayon, Sohei Lee, Ian McLean, Francis Kem, Desmond Murphy, Ivan Smith, Vesela, Everild, Catherine, Mike, Tom Byford, Harley Smith, Francine Berube, Nadia Stevens, P.A., Deirdre Hitchcock, Mildred Fletcher, Melissa Charles Taylor, Juliana Das, Barbara Loretta, Françoise Bélanger, Thomas Newman, André Lusignan, and Pauline Saint Martin. And of your love and charity, pray for the repose of the souls of Alan Ward, Annie Estale, and Marjorie McCurcher, whose anniversaries occur upon this day. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Let us pray, Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee, most merciful, that you accept our alms and oblations, and receive these our prayers, which we offer to thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity in godly love. We beseech thee also lead all nations in the way of righteousness, so to guide and direct their governors and rulers. Thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, and to all the put authority under her, they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. 
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially thy servants, Mary, our bishop, David, our metropolitan, Linda, our primate, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, that may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, O those who claim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with a meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants a part of this life in thy faith and fear. We bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseech thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ maker of all things and judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess thy manifold, manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine we do earnestly repent, and our heart we sorrow for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them of heart and repentance and true faith, turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Because through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, he might bring us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. <laughs> Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercies give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice 
oblation and satisfaction of sin to the whole world and institute, as Holy Gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memorial of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, remnants of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant for the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all our benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we must heartily thank that thou hast graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with spiritual food, the most precious body and blood, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, to all to wear us through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here, and unto thee, O Lord, our self bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice, and although we are set this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost, world of heaven. Grant, we beseech the Almighty God, that we may attain in pureness of mind and understanding to those things which we celebrate in solemn worship, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the peace of God has passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you. Remain with you always. Amen. Depart in peace. Thank The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. She by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh. And well, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Good be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts. So we've known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of the angel. So by his cross and passion, brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless, O Lord God, this creature chalk, to render it helpful to us. Grant that they who use it in faith and with it inscribe upon the entrance of their homes the names of thy saints, Kasbar, Melikar, and Balthazar, may through their merits and intercession enjoy health and body and protection of soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 